Just <laughs> it's like a folding chair. Like, this this, si this side of the room is this side of the room's yours. This side of the room's mine. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, is Manica here? No. He's here. Yep. Okay. Uh, so guys, well, actually, the um, the um, uh, the circlet they got, like enchanted. Uh -huh. Uh, he wants to take a closer look at that, actually. See, uh, try to discern precisely what enchantments are actually woven into this thing. Because if a gem just can unlock things in it, so, um, so like what else might be hidden inside these circlets? Uh, so a circlet, does it mean it's a tiara? Yeah, it's a circlet. Oh my god, it's a tiara? Well, if you want it to be or a like tiara. Or like a headband, or, you yeah, know. Sorry. You can make it look however you want, yeah. Cash will have it look like a tiara. Of course you will. Now but she's yeah, he the will, princess. Uh, he will dedicate uh, some serious attention to that and yeah, bend his considerable intellect to uh, looking into these things. Sure. We can, you can spend sort of, I guess, the rest of the yes. evening night. Can you make a spellcraft check then? Uh, can I take ten or just roll? No, I'll make one. Boom! <laughs> Alright. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's some more information. It seems that indeed it does have the effect of allowing you to disguise yourself. Uh, it also um, gives a, a minus 10 penalty against all saves against divination attempts hmm. and counts for all purposes as uh, making the wielder known to the item creator as they're very well known for the purpose of, uh, of divination spells. Surprise, Will. Exhale. It basically will not fail. It will exhale slowly as I knew it. What? This is how we did it. He mumbled to himself. Good, good. And sort of plans start to form in his mind. He will not say anything to Sirius. He will just, you know. I, I can see you're playing like reverse scrying or something on it. But what? I will oh, explain. Too big. But not here. Well, right now... So that's a very big altar you created there. <laughs> Saw that in the bag of holding, wow. It pulled, but it folds up. After <laughs> that, uh, he will attend dinner. dinner. Oh, thank you, man. I'm putting on the object layer. That's nice. I'll, I'll be reclaiming that before we leave. Well, where would I like to sit today? Uh, he was so big. During dinner, or, you know, uh, when the servants have, uh, you know, served it and yeah, they Sakras. bring in all the dinner. Yeah, Sakras will send them away after that. Uh, and he will put up... He will walk around the room. You see him sort of inscribe different runes along the walls and floor of it. Uh, mumbling. Uh, mumbling to himself. Uh, and you see them slowly start sort of glowing. Uh, and after uh, ten minutes of this... Uh, he will basically speak the final incantation, and they will stop glowing and just, you know, shimmer a bit, as whatever magic he has woven takes hold of the, of the room. I don't think it would, that would be enough, actually. Uh, depends, I think it's like 15 plus spell level or something? Yeah, that won't be enough. It's level 5 spell? It's a level 5 spell. Then Azurus will question you, <laughs> curious what you're doing. When the spell has taken hold, Sakurai will sit down by the table and say... Well, where's Marcus, by the way? I believe he is in his room, asleep. Servant! Bring Master Thornblade and put him in the chair. He's dumped on the Carry table, Marcus sleeping. Over here. <laughs> Carry him in. Um, after that, Sakurai will look around the room and say, Well, dear friends, you may wonder what the spell I have crafted into this room does. It is... Um, he smiles. It is called the Mage's Private Sanctum, and it allows complete secrecy when within this room. Any attempts to scry will automatically fail. People outside cannot listen in or see in. They will only see a foggy, dark mass with no sounds escaping the area. Any attempts to detect thoughts, send, message, or any other sort of communication or divination into this room is impossible. We can speak freely here, safe from any prying eyes of Thorn or anyone else. And I noticed you're studying, he points up to the circlet. Yes, uh, Zagreus will take out the circlet and put it on the table. This, 
I have concluded is not just beneficial to us, dear friends. It is something I have suspected for some time, but these items allow Thorn to scry us whenever and however he wishes. This acts as a homing beacon. He cannot fail. Any time he just wills it, he can see us and what we are doing. This is how he keeps tabs on us. I have not worn mine for quite some time. I have stored it in one of the bags of holding. He has not been able to scry me, I do believe. But any of you wearing it would be easy for him to pick out. Well, any time we're doing something like infiltration, then he'll be able to see me. Indeed. He taps the circlet. Personally, I would recommend you not ever wearing these unless absolutely necessary. So he returns his normal headband on. Well, I don't really need it unless we're needing to hide our identities. Keeping away any obvious symbols would be enough, I think. Well, actually thinking about it, to be to be honest, I don't think Azura actually needs it. <laughs> it. Disguise. Well, I mean, that without that's without the headband. <laughs> Well, Cash kind of needs to use it when, um... That is true, I don't know if the makeup kit will be enough for you. Well, the thing is, mm. she needs it uh, to hide. We could... Technically, we could, like, break them down. <laughs> that would, of break course... Break them down and rebuild them. Hanukkah, <laughs> can you make the potion smaller? Those potion in the middle. That would, of course, uh, immediately That's alert Thorn that we have in realize his ruse and his spying mechanisms. I realize that uh, Lady Cash needs this these headbands when she's walking about town, but at least here in the mansion she would be able to do without. I should think. Again, any time we need to be wearing these, we should not speak of anything that is uh, heretical. To the good cardinal. Uh, so he does not trust us. Of course not. He's a cardinal of Asmodeus. Trust is not in his nature. Did does do you think he knows what we talked to the Baron about? Perhaps, but he would have to be scry have been scrying at us at that very moment. Uh, perhaps the Baron himself had similar protections in the mansion, I am not sure. He was an accomplished spellcaster, after all. He shrugs. Uh, if he knew, uh, I guess he would have acted perhaps sooner, perhaps even to kill the Baron. If he could teleport away Richard Havelin, he might have done the same with the Baron. To prevent him from spilling the beans, as it were. But if he did he not. Zacharias, if you wish to prevent scrying, I have an idea. Yes. Now, what he gave us as a basic thing to stop cash from being... or stop any of us or our identities being seen, I do not believe it should be that difficult for you to recreate. Zacharias nods. It is certainly possible for me to recreate such an item. This circlet is not necessary. All, all you require is to recreate one for cash. The rest of us, well... Marcus is a bit of a show away with his dark armor, but we'll manage. <laughs> Maybe two might be needed, but... Yes, it is... For the rest of us, I don't think we really need it. It is something we can do. I, my point is just that any any time we need to... We, need, we are carrying out something that could be... Um, Against Fawn's advantage. Yes, then, then we should take these off and leave them at home or in the bag of holding so that they are outside time and space and thus he would not be able to scry. He can still try to scry us, of course, but... If he'd have amusing time, he would just see an altar floating hmm. about. Indeed. Also, this room, here uh, motions, I will, um, I will any time we need to speak of uh, important and sensitive matters such as Thorn and his allegiance or his faults, uh, tell me, and I will set up this enchantment again. It lasts for 24 hours, but it takes a lot of power to do this, uh, and so uh, I need a heads up, as it were. Understandable. Now then, Tigrais, you know, 
twins his fingers together and puts them on a table. We learned some interesting things of the good Thorn tonight, did we not? Interesting is one way of putting it. Kit put her arms on the table. It's always about a woman, isn't it? She looks at uh, Asorius and Zacharias. Zacharias grimaces. Yes, perhaps it is a that, Lady Cash. Perhaps it is a that. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> I oh! missed you. Can, can it speak? Yes. Yeah, yeah come speak, and drop it. Can speak to Cash at least. All right. What and does it sound like when it when it speaks? I missed you too, matron. <laughs> uh, what is it? A shadow Drake? Yeah, it is. She can speak draconic and comic. Oh, in that case, yeah, you could. You, everyone can hear it. <laughs> um. So let's see here. Samuel Havelin, a prominent priest and later bishop of the Mithran Fate. Falls in love with a woman called Branwen. But she is not interested in him. She fancies the more, perhaps, heroic and knightly brother, Thomas Havelin. And he woos her and she falls for him, leaving the good Bishop Samuel to, with a broken heart, I imagine. Alone, hateful, spiteful of the betrayal of his brother, his own brother stealing the woman he loves away from him. And so he turns to Asmodeus for worship, guidance, power, perhaps in an attempt to win her back. This corrupts him, and he is found out in some great purge of the Inquisition, and is burned at the stake. Then the powers of Asmodeus somehow Resur reverse this. Yes, resurrects him, gives him another chance. But I, I wonder what, what kind of yes. If he was burned at the stake, none of his remains would exist. Resurrect the resurrection that powerful was a true miracle. Yes. Yes. It is not something that can be easily done. No. From Asmodeus, this must be easy. It would, but uh, the Prince of Hell does not move, uh, does not weave such magic just for anyone. I wonder what kind of deal he struck with Thorn for this. Whatever it's... it should be, it's, it would be one hell of a deal with the devil. <laughs> one hell of a deal indeed. Sacrifice <laughs> taps the table. Yes. It well, is interesting. Night hell. <laughs> Kesh looks at the others. Is it just me? Or does men get very, what could I say, feel like they own their women? Some, perhaps. I cannot speak for whatever feelings Cardinal Havelin had for this Branwen woman. But we know that she that she did not uh, respond to his advances, and that she favoured the knightly brother Thomas instead, uh, and that from that union came a son, Richard. Well, we learned something today. Very interesting. That Justice Fawn does have feelings. Yes, yes, he does. Or has He's, at least. He, no, he has. He saved that boy because half of that boy is the woman he loved. Yes, indeed. The only living proof of uh, the Lady Branwen is Sir Richard. And he saved him at, n at great risk for exposing himself, no less. Such magics he wove. They were obvious, they were powerful, they were not a scalpel, it was a brute hammer. I suspect he acted out of desperation, even. Very foolish. Yes, an opening in his armor. And, and now, why did he not stop him coming to the horn in the first place? Why would he have save known? him in the middle of combat? 
Yeah, How I would guess. he have known he's scrying us? He knows what we were doing. I doubt he was scrying that boy. How could I he? I doubt he could scry, scry that boy. I doubt he's met him that much. Exactly. He he scries us in the battle, sees the young Sir Richard foolhardily and bravely rushing into battle against, uh, well, against the evil, and he knows our capabilities well at this point. He knows that the uh, the boy stands a very high chance of death against us. Ex especially since he seems to be going up almost alone. <laughs> uh, he was in a stone prison. There was no way he was going to get out of there. Man. Yes, there was no way he would have survived. And so Thorn acts out of desperation. Or perhaps some form of love for his lost Branwen. And saves the boy. But now we know everything. Yes, it seems interesting indeed. Thorn has feelings, and he has moved to betray the cause. So he is not as soulless as everyone wants him to believe. Everyone has the other side of them. It is true. No one is 100% heartless, though. You can definitely try. <laughs> We are also fortunate that uh, that uh, Brother uh, Train actually thought us to be close to uh, to Colonel Thorn. Mentioning his name seemed to have uh, relaxed him even more. I think he trusts us a lot at the moment. It would be good to keep that up. His oh, loyalty no. seems to be with Asmodeus uh, above Thorn, and if we can implicate Thorn. Then we can start turning the knots against him. I just hope he does not speak to Fawn about our conversation. Not yet. I hope not. I hope not. But so far we have no reason to go against Fawn. So far, no. We are still uh, on the same path here. I have. The Thorn has done much for us. He has sent us into danger, but we have prevailed. And he has supplied us with some payment for these deeds and these deeds have indeed hurt the church as of now our goals are aligned I do not think we should move openly against him not yet no and after all we need more power before we do so the thorn is no doubt a very powerful man we have seen still creatures. remember remember our contract we cannot go against him unless he breaks the contract indeed we're talking about Adrestus phone yep. Cardinal Samuel Havelin as he's known also oh. also this room is water with a major sanctum so no one can listen in Jake oh, Fawn has think. been creeping up on us all the time with those uh, hit bands Yep. Yeah, so, I figured. I I was here when he um got the spellcraft thing, and I figured that's probably what it was. By the way, you can remove your disguise. We're inside our own base. Well, oh, I just hadn't bothered. <laughs> it's not a disguise. I'm just I'm yeah, manually but, changing my token picture because disguises are borked. Yep. They're not. Also, well, they're not also, me. They're also, also that that is Marcus without the helmet. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, that's what my that's what Marcus actually. <gasps> <laughs> Sorius didn't know he thought it was a disguise. His hair is almost as luscious as mine. I will not have it. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Attention, Chiron, please vacate the area. <laughs> oh, yes. You have five seconds to vacate the area. It's like, he has a face? <laughs> what? It's not just a helmet with glowing eyes. I'm so disturbed by this. You have three seconds to vacate oh, I've got the a, area. I've got another also, picture, too, that I can use. Something else. Um, uh, like leans over. That's the one. That's what we like. Yeah, that's the one. By Good God. Things. I like that one. It's a really good headline Sorry, picture. Sorry, by Asmodeus. Exactly. That is a hell night indeed. It is. Sure, let's let's use that one. Let's get used to this one. Okay. Or by Nezzy. Then you need to change the picture. <laughs> by Nezzy. Oh, yeah, I do. I don't actually have the actual picture. I, I sent it to you, I think. Yeah, but I lost it. Oh. We can get it to you again. Uh, use, use the Google search for similar pictures. Yeah. I'm just going to scroll up. Um, Let me chat log with Jonas. Yes, Nessus. 
Yeah, by Nessus. Oh, so Grace will lean over. Now, we also learned some interesting facts today, did we not? Uh, about our interesting neighbor close to the mansion. That intrigued me. Worries, but intrigues. Yes, if we can somehow strike up a deal with this vampire prince, uh, that might be a powerful ally indeed. Very. And perhaps he could even, looking over at Marcus, help oh, us in other ways. Marcus, oh, are you talking about the vampire? Yes. Yeah, our neighbors! Oh, okay. We're gonna go yeah, in there with a basket of blood muffins. <laughs> yeah, well, see, because all I heard was him looking at me, and I was just, like, scrolling through the Skype chat log, and I hear my name, and I'm like, oh, we're talking about vampire, right? <laughs> well, they uh, did sell, sell blood rum in one of the taverns. I don't, doubt here is actually, actual blood. I, I don't think Marcus has <laughs> well, actually you know? told us, a, a totally group, like the characters, anything about his thoughts of becoming a vampire, or if even that's something Marcus well, has actually contemplated. No, but uh, Marcus, Marcus hasn't, no. In-game thing, no. No, but Jake said that Marcus looked intrigued when he mentioned the vampires. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. To people who notice. <laughs> yeah. Ahem. Whoever made a good enough perception check. <laughs> that was well, probably if you needed a perception check, you wouldn't have just been reading it in. You would have. A bit more, you know. Oh, there's that Batman picture you sent me. <laughs> the, the, the one with the Batman and Robin hugging. No, it was oh. um, it was a Batman like knight. I'm Batman. Yes. I'm Batman. Uh, but yes, uh, bringing him to our side would certainly be very beneficial. I think that we should uh, play upon his hatred of the Mithran Church, as well as perhaps the love of the city. I do not think we should mention that, um, well, Fire Axe might actually sack the city when he gets here. I think we should keep that far away from the good. Uh, from the good prince, but if we tell him that we are here to plan and destroy the veil, uh, perhaps then he would be intrigued enough to actually help us in this endeavor. I'm sure the vampire would have no problem with a city burned to the ground. Uh, he was mentioned to be the Patriots by Brother Thrain, and we do know that uh, the inhabitants of this a city seems to love it a great deal. Threatening it is not the way forward, I think. Again, it's fine. I have a feeling the city will be dead before the bugbears get here. I can't move anymore. Uh, <laughs> we are moving against the Vale, uh, not against the city, remember. Whatever happens to the city yes. is not really our concern. My point stands. You realize what, after we finish what we're doing, what will happen to all of Garston Hall and the surrounding region. <laughs> As I said, we do not mention this. We say, yes, that we are here for the Vale, and to destroy it. To chase out the hated Mithrans from his beloved city. For both his and our purposes. Of course, they align at this point. I can't imagine the dragon just tabbing around and <laughs> on, t on the table. Deck. Mm hmm. They can only move 20. Hold person. <sighs> I can't move more. And technically, it would use Cash's will save, so. It flies better, I think. It's flying. Yeah, it likes flying better. Yeah, yeah but it Perfectly moves. Perfectly good at it. It can do anything in flying. Yeah, but move 20, fly 90. Perfect. It does a backflip. Yeah, when, when it, actually, it actually hops on the ground, it's like clumsy. I'd rather want to see it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's made for, for being in the air, it's not made for standing on ground. No, it doesn't have it. Doesn't have any, you know, four legs. Four legs. No, it just sort of pops around, <laughs> like a crow. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> do we have any other business to do Cute. today? I think we should contact this vampire prince as soon as I possible agree. and see what we can learn from him. Would you like to do this mm. tomorrow then? Or yes, perhaps. We also need to investigate this ancient temple with the Medusa, find out her purpose. Maybe we can get her on our side too. How much do you know of Medusas? 
Well, let's see, what do I know about Medusas? Is that a arcane check? What would it be? Oh, it's, it's it a Medusa be? magical beast. Yes. All right. Sure. Yep. Okay. I know everything about Medusas. You pretty much do, but let's add a plus. No, not even add a plus two. I rolled a one. Derp. Minus two. I think they like water. Ah! <laughs> Shut up! I'm trying to think. Nice. Let's try this. Um, Kyron, are you ready for intelligence checks? Are known for turning people to stone with their gaze. Oh wow. They're known for petrifying people. And uh, they're known for being very vain. Uh, also, if if pressed into melee, they have uh, tons of snakes uh, instead of hair that uh, each individually can bite you and poison you. And that's very unpleasant. Give it her best shot. So, a gaze attack and vain, you say, Zacharias. Uh, they also can never be flanked, as they can see out the eyes of each individual snake. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, uh, basically, they can you can't sneak up on them at all. <laughs> well, since we are trying to get her to join us, I think we're gonna attack her. But yes, yeah. On on you say yeah. You know, on saying about like very vain and had the gaze attack. Zeus will pull out his silver mirror. Yeah, vain and. Uh, and certainly also uh, very proud. Yes. Well, there's will then check his own reflection in the silver mirror. Uh, maybe we should just send a series and then woo her. Yes, he will flick her his hair and she'll be like, oh! Just go in there and tell her how beautiful she is and she'll maybe marry you. Of course, of course. It's my pleasure. You can never look her in the eye. <laughs> Sirius convinces everyone this is the best idea in the world. <laughs> well, simultaneously, if he was to do this, he would have like the silver mirror permanently in front of his face. <laughs> he does not like the idea of being attacked by gaze attacks. Bad things happened to someone last time that happened. Ah, oh, the Minotaur. Well, he knows that you can be. I mean, you can basically fight with your eyes closed, going blind. Uh, Spells do not work the best while you're blind. Sending no, Kyron, he's, he's an expert at this. <laughs> yes, Kyron, we're going to put a blindfold on you. Charge! Charge! <laughs> well, first things first, we know she's pride. Make a story. Yeah, speak, speak to her vanity and tell her that such a magnificent creature as herself should not be uh, locked up in such a temple. Join us and, you know, the world will see your beauty. We will send you into places uh, where your terrible visage can devastate, you know, the uh, those who have scoffed at you for so many years. And allow you to take wrath and... Take your own land p above ground, which you can use as your own domain. Exactly. Without Indeed. fear of. Join us. And together. <laughs> we will rule, we will rule God. the galaxy. Exactly. No, Telling God. And, uh, well, we will, well the rest, the rest yeah. of glory comes after Telling God. Yeah, we will cut mm. a, a bloody swathe through the faithful and well, those who have hated and despised her. Things you want to take over the veil once we're done. Yeah, probably uh, Medusan kill, killing off the, the people in the Vale seems to be something she would totally be into, I guess. Medusan Vale? That can be our next job. Yeah. Is it bad that I think uh, that it will be easy to get the Medusa to join us? Well, as well is, yes, is because now you jinxed it. That's serious dreamy, he can do it. Look at his hair. I'm almost as dreamy. Well, almost no is not close. Almost is not good enough. I'm dreamy enough. Maybe not for a Medusa. Maybe. Then you're you gonna know. woo her. You're not dreamy. You're in, you're scary. Yeah, that's true. You're scary. That's true. Well, no, I'm pretty dreamy. You're scary. When I'm not trying to be scary, I'm. Dreamy. Do you do you you're have always... twenty five charisma? I'm only five off. Five is a lot. It is. Less, less, less than you think at higher levels, though, of it. 
And you have that eerie aura. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I'm not so dreamy. Told you. Well, maybe a Medusa likes that type of thing. Maybe. We don't know like, what oh, type I of love, men. I love the despair you're emanating. <laughs> oh, no. What if, if what if she's into Chiron? We're doomed. Yeah, we're doomed. Or Chiron? Have a nice day. The Karen is always no woman yeah, back to is good enough for me. No, he, he has blind sense. He can totally work out a relationship with this Medusa. I doubt he will. <laughs> for the greater good. Yes, back um, to... Um Oh yes, we have the uh, we have the ring of the disappeared iris of Gaston Hall. If we can somehow find a or craft an old skeleton of a half elf maiden, and uh, we have that ring, we can ask a boon of the Duke. What boon would we require, though, from such a? Oh, that's the question. Not his hand in marriage. No. Good. How would you feel about more money? Money is certainly an option. Uh, Actually, Monica, would we know if the Duke has, like, um... I mean, what could he do for us that we need? I doubt he can grant us immunity to something. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, grant us a diplomatic immunity in the city. We can do whatever we like. That'd be great, but I, uh... Grant... Grant us the power to buy everything in the city for free. <laughs> yep, confiscate all the goods of the, that gnome's magic menagerie and the city under the, the city is paying for it. <laughs> the city gets its bill at the end of the month. What? I mean, the duke's power is almost absolute, right? He's he's vying for control against the priests. Uh, I mean, he he does have. Um... I mean, he he does have quite a bit of power. He he he's not sort of unbound, however, and you know that he's actually never known this uh, this person, yeah. uh, Iris.